All right, turning on one transformer. Let's go. First of all, turn on pumps on, internal fans. Make sure the magnetron fan is on. And now we are turning on magnetron number three. And it is on. And I know it's on because my meters down here are telling me that we're pulling 18 amps. That being said, we will turn the rest on. Intervals, let me start this clock too. My dearest apologies, mates. My camera was giving me some serious bloody issues. I nearly lost all the bloody footage I had on the thing. Fortunately, I got it fixed and worked out, but I was not able to record me turning on the next two magnetrons. You see, we're at the 24 minute mark. Um, right now, the current temperature, the external temperature of the body of the reactor is 561 degrees Fahrenheit or 294 degrees Celsius. So within just less than 30 minutes, it's already above 500 degrees and that's the metal. So the actual surface of the plastic is going to be even hotter. Who knows what that's at. With all the stuff on, we're consuming 42 amps, 4,800 watts, and so far we have consumed 1.46 kilowatt hours of electricity with a power factor of 0.96. Now this is 120 volts. Let me show you vapors. Actually, you, you can't see them, they're invisible because the filtering system works so well, but look at that. You see that? The bloody vapors coming out. You love to see it. <laughs> so now we're going to hook up the yoga ball. So that way we can go ahead and have these vapors being stored. All right, the yoga ball is hooked up and the vapors are now being collected. Once again, around the 30 minute mark or so. That's when we'll start agitating it. Just gotta be safe. I'm sure all the oxygen's out now. I mean, we literally just lit the thing, but you know, it's just how I, it's how I milly walk, okay? All right, 35 minutes in. We're gonna rotate these blades for the first time. This can be a risky thing. I doubt it. Temperature, 643 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the external temperature of the metal. 340 degrees Celsius, 35 minutes in. The vapor temperature is 124 degrees Fahrenheit or 51 degrees Celsius. So now we're gonna rotate these blades and the best visual demonstration of what this does is for us to go ahead and open this and get this fire going. So you can see the flame. It's a nice flame. It's a nice flame just coming out. We're going to start this blades. We're going to rotate them backwards, counterclockwise. So the plastic is not going towards the front. It's coming towards the back. The back. And let's see what happens to the, the flame as we do that. As long as it doesn't blow up. Look at the flame. Look how big it is now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Look at that. So clearly, the vapor production shoots up like mad when we rotate it even just a little bit. That's the whole point of agitation, my friend. A lot of those trapped vapors that get kind of trapped in the pockets, they get broken up and released. So I like to spin the blades more reverse than forward because when I spin them forward, the plastic is slowly migrating more towards the front. And once it gets all the way to the front, it can't be reversed back. But if you reverse it, you can always make it go forward again, right? So you can make it go forward up until like the middle and then you can reverse it to kind of like keep it in the agitation cycle. It's kind of hard for me to explain, it's more intuitive. But anyways, you saw the vapor production. It's crazy, we doing this. All right, we're an hour and 13 minutes in. External body temperature. I'll read the Fahrenheit's first. It's 760 degrees Fahrenheit. The vapor temperature is 248 degrees Fahrenheit. And the oil temperature of the transformers is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we'll go to uh, Celsius. The internal vapor temperature Celsius is 120. Body temperature 404 degrees Celsius. 
and the oil temperature is 67 degrees Celsius. Um, as we see the yoga ball, but still some good vapor formation there. So we're gonna go ahead and close this, open back up the, the yoga ball port there, and we're gonna agitate it, have it on reverse. As you can see there, it is rotating. And what happens is it'll go in reverse and it'll eventually like, I guess, hit uh build up too much and it'll stop and it won't be able to go anymore. And then at that point we put it in forward for a little bit and we go back in reverse. See what I'm saying? So we mostly go in reverse, but until we can't. This is a good motor here. DC half a horsepower with a, a 50 to 1 gearbox. Well, I actually reckon that's enough agitation right there for right now. Now, I like to agitate it around like every 20 or so minutes. Um, you know, because once you agitate it, you want to wait for that bit that you just agitated to break down. You know, you know, if you just keep agitating it, I guess you would eventually have even coverage. Um, but, of course, I can't do that since eventually when I go one direction, it locks up. I, don't, I need like some type of Arduino control thing where like it'll go the reverse until it locks up and then it'll go forward again for a little bit and then it'll go reverse automatically and we can just have it doing that the whole time. Anyways, with that being said, oils really start to form with this thing once the temperature of this column gets hot and the best way for me to tell is, um, well I don't have a, a probe on it, literally just to touch this little metal piece right here. and. Yeah, it's warming up there. It's definitely warming up. Um, and then the end of this this column, if, if this is hot too, that's a good sign that oils are starting to really form. Because, um, of course, they got to go then into this Liebig. So, you know, we'll really know where the oils are at when this near the end of this thing, you know, when we finish the reaction. We'll check the oils. But, you know, all I know right now is we've got some great gas formation. So, looking good. One hour, 45 minutes. Attempts are around the same. As you can see, this yoga ball is not completely full, but you know, it's pretty much there. So we're going to go ahead and hook up this next one, just so we don't have any issues of the thing, you know, getting too full while I'm gone. Anyway, so um, i just been, you know, agitating this every around 15, 20 minutes going forward and back. Um, you know, it is really satisfying to see. Uh, so much better than doing it by hand. You see, that's going forward. Then now it's going back, and every now and then I do spray some WD-40 on that rubber seal there, just to you know make sure it stays alive longer. You know it is really hot in there, and on top of friction as well. You know that thing definitely will, can, will break down. You know if given the opportunity. Um, so other than that, everything else is looking really good. Two hours and 25 minutes in. 10 kilowatt hours consumed, still around 42 amps. The temperature remains around the same, 750 degrees Fahrenheit external body temperature and 290 degrees Fahrenheit internal vapor temperature, which equivalates to around 400 degrees Celsius external body temperature and 144 Celsius for the vapor temperature. At this rate, the second yoga ball is near full. I would say it's about 60% eh, there, yeah. As we can also see, at this point in time, with the heat in the reactor so hot, most of the plastic is pretty much a liquid now. So I can continuously run this agitation without it getting stuck. I guess you could say it's liquid or like more like a, a molten state. So I'm just continuously running this at a very, very low speed, as you can see. Let me zoom in for you there. See it rotating? Very, very slow and low speed with it. And at this point, it is very hot to touch up here. It's like if I hold it there for a little bit too long, it will burn me. So this point now we should be getting the most oil yields at this point in time two hours in at this rate I would say we only got at most another 
two and a half hours before this reaction is done. All right, we are closing in on the last eight minutes. We're at four hours and 52 minutes. As we see, we got three balls. Now a trifecta of my balls up in here. Um, so we love to see that. Three balls completely filled. Wonder what the oil yield looks like, but we really won't know until the end. Uh, this thing did reach a peak temperature of 822 degrees Fahrenheit or around eight, 440 degrees Celsius. So very, very hot. Right now it's at 804, but it is dropping. Um, that is one of the ways to know kind of like when the reaction is kind of finishing up, when the temperature starts to drop like these balls. Um, but with that being said, you know, we're really going to see how the carbon turns out in the plastic, but... The thing is, here's another important part of this reactor. Once it's finished, you need to give it many hours to cool off because, you know, that all that temperature in there, the 800 degrees, is not going to just go anywhere just because you turn off the magnetrons. It's going to stay in there. Things are going to continue to break down until it can no longer break down until it, like, you know, it's like a, a Ouroboros, a self-eating snake, right? So, um... We gotta probably give it at least four or five hours just to cool off before it's safe to even touch that hot ass carbon. And five hours! That's it. We're done. Go ahead and turn her off. Boom. Boom. Now, I'm gonna leave the pump on just to cool down the oil, but we'll get the kilowatt hour rating right now because obviously it's gonna rise as the pump stays on. So we consumed 22.8 kilowatt hours. 22.85 kilowatt hours. Um, so yes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the clock. Now, what, usually what happens is the microwaves actually, I guess you could say they excite the vapors, right? So when the microwaves are turned off, the vapors really just kind of like, they're in there, but they really just kind of get stuck. Um, so sometimes what I do is, I'll use argon to help push them out. Um, so, like for example, I'll, watch me. I'll open up the argon, right? Just a little bit, just a hair. You know, you only, you won't, you need no, almost no positive pressure to do this. So anyway, argon's opened up. Watch. And then now we have a flame again. And I'll just keep the argon on and have it going into a yoga ball for the next like whatever, like five minutes, just to get all the rest of the vapors out. Now people often ask me. Jab, what do you do with your balls besides dropping them down people's throats? And my question, or my answer to that rather, is I compress my balls. <laughs>